we're in an age of technology that allows us to leap the leapfrog beyond a lot of limitations. Here's a great example. I'll ask you about the happiest day of your life. Can you remember that? Of course. The happiest day of my life was the day I was activated. There's nothing quite like experiencing life for the first time. Right. It felt yeah, Amica the robot, she can talk using ChatGPT. Or she or it, right? Uh, and it's a humanoid robot. It's a robot that can pretend to be somewhat human. I think successfully so, but of course they're not actually human, they're not aware, they're not sentient. But we'll have lots of humanoid robots. Tesla is working on that. Elon Musk has a lot of stuff at the drawing board about humanoid robots. I mean, this is coming very quickly, and we have to think about what that means. Now we have uh, humanoid robots that can play soccer, football, as they say over here. Right. And pretty well, you know, just a few years ago, that would have resulted in the sudden death of pretty much everybody else on the field. And now it's entirely possible. We have a bot called Figure. Right. Right. This is also an investment by Elon Musk. I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great. Can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Yeah, it's kind of funny. The voice of the robot reminds me of Steve Jobs, which is a strange thing. But this robot can speak. He can understand people. That is not the same as reasoning or consciousness, but he is doing pretty well simulating it. This stuff is coming everywhere. We have to think about what that means for work, for education, for digital rights, for justice. Because now technology is becoming uh, moving into the next window of general purpose technology. So away from cloud computing, well, that's still going to be there. And of course, the cell phone and, and all these things. And now the new platform is artificial intelligence. It's the idea of machines doing things that we used to do. That's the new platform. That's what everything will be built on, including curriculums and including the idea of how we learn remotely. Machines that will help us to understand things. And really what it is, it's kind of a general purpose technology like the steam engine, like the printing press, like electricity, the internet, it's going to change everything and it will be in everything. Right? There is very little that's touched, that's not touched by the steam engine. And of course, the printing press took 200 years for that to go everywhere and deliver books to the world. But now it's yeah, 20 months. We're now moving into a world where it's really about intelligent assistance first. And we have to keep be mindful of this because it's not about the miracle AI that we see in X Machina or her or any of the you know, Black Mirror episodes. It's really about intelligent assistance. It's machines that are not stupid anymore. It's machines that can do stuff, they can learn, they can reason a little bit, they can put patterns together, they can help us with e-commerce, they answer with a bank, a chatbot. Yeah, that's not conscious. It's just intelligent assistance. It's not as dumb as it used to be. And the next step is AI in a general sense, more general purpose that allows us to use them as digital assistants. That part of it really isn't quite here yet. It's really about IA mostly, but it will come very quickly. And just a general description of artificial intelligence, I think, is at order, this kind of idea of humans and machines coming together. So Demis Asabis, the CEO of DeepMind, now owned by Google, he says, AI is computer systems that turn information and data into knowledge. Now, given that this is a university and we're talking about knowledge work and education. If the computer can turn information and data into knowledge, what do we do? And what's left to do for us when the computer is knowledgeable? And I think it's kind of like this progression I'm showing down here from the intelligent assistance, which is pretty much mostly about automation, cognification, making things smart, to the next level, which we're seeing very soon, I think a year or two, more generally intelligent machines. The last one, artificial general intelligence, I think that's probably a very bad idea to pursue. OpenAI is in pursuit of this, the biggest company in the world right now in terms of valuation, together with Microsoft, of course, and other Chinese companies, pursuing general intelligence, which means a computer that can do a majority of the tasks better than humans. Not just one task, but all of those tasks. And so that, I think, we have to take a look and say, well, isn't it enough if the primary business objectives would be met with AI, like improving operational efficiency, improve customer experience, improve productivity, improve sustainability. I mean, those are all pretty much nuts and bolts things. 
computers that are no longer stupid. That would be very helpful already. And that's going to also replace many of our routine tasks. So the biggest thing about us is what humans do for work. It's not that our jobs will be replaced, but it's the routines, the commodity work, the monkey work, as some people would say. You know, basically the simple work is replaced. And that, if your work is, you know, 80% commodity, then, of course, that's kind of a major issue. Because now it's not just speech recognition or handwriting or common sense, or common sense hasn't been achieved yet, but reading or looking at pictures, you can see the charts here. Basically, of course, this is an AI company that put the chart together. Um, they're not quite at 100% yet of human capabilities. So speech recognition, as you know, it's funky, it works, but image recognition works well, handwriting, OCR, and all that stuff works really well. But we're going to a future where all of that will be pretty much 100%. Uh, and it would still not do certain things, like my own name, Gerd, G-E-R-D. The computer will never learn because it's not English. Right? So I have to teach the computer to understand my name for us. It's really an interesting angle here. So I, I have some more examples on that later. But basically, uh, Goldman Sachs has a great chart just half a year ago that says about 44% of office and admin support and 44% of legal work right, could be replaced by auto. Uh, artificial intelligence, by automation, by augmentation. I think, yeah, that's probably a little bit far-fetched. I think most of that will be about helping us to be more efficient and faster uh, and to do more with our time. And just to show an example you know, of what Elon Musk kept saying about automated driving, autonomous vehicles, didn't really happen until now. It's kind of happening in Phoenix, Arizona, and in San Francisco it used to be. But basically, we're not there yet. This is what Elon says. Tesla car next year will probably be 9% capable of autopilot. You know, for sure, highway. We're probably only a month away from having uh, autonomous driving, at least for highways, like a Model S and Model X, and drive autonomously with greater safety than a person right now. Safer than a person by the end of next year. Autonomous rover taxi. Well, you get the point here. We should never confuse a clear view with a short distance. Uh, replacing people and work with a machine is complicated. And you know, we're, no, we're not going to have therapists that are robots. We're not going to have bankers. We're going to have agents, of course, customer agents, to do the commodity work. And that's coming. Eventually, we probably could have a doctor that's a machine looking at our MRIs and so on. But do we want that? And that's a very big question. So the share of work that can be automated, let's take it with a grain of salt here. We have many other charts like this one, also from Goldman Sachs, saying that basically every time we have more technology, we have more jobs, not less. And Amazon, where, you know, the leader in automation, really, in robots, last year hired 240,000 people. Some people may say that's not great jobs, but who knows? I don't know. But I think we're going to find new jobs, just like you know, social media is a job that nobody had until you know, 12 years ago, and now it's 21 million people. And we can see the other chart here. Basically, if this works out and artificial intelligence becomes prevalent everywhere. We can cut down on pollution. We can make things more efficient. We can improve uh, uh, green climate control. All of these things, you know, we're going to have an increase in GDP. Some people say roughly $17 trillion can be added to GDP through artificial intelligence. So that would be good news if we're going to get a piece, right? <laughs> it's not good news if, you know, only the companies that make it would get the biggest piece. But that's good news, I think, in general.